Hello and welcome to the Let's Talk Cloud ERP podcast. This special edition podcast is brought to you in partnership with the Let's Talk Data podcast. I am your host, Jennifer Frank McGrory. We have a great conversation planned for everyone today. In just a few minutes, I'm going to hand the microphone over to my esteemed colleague, Terry Penner. He's going to host a conversation around the topics of extensibility and clean core best practices. I will be back as your host in just a few weeks with new stories I'm currently working on. Until then, let's get rolling. Welcome, Terry. Take it away. Thanks very much, Jennifer. Great to be with you today. Welcome, everyone, to the podcast. In this podcast, we're going to talk with a couple of S4HANA and BTP experts on a very important topic for SAP S4HANA customers, extensibility and clean core best practices. My name is Terry Penner. I might have seen you at Sapphire, and I'm joined today by my colleagues, Ruben Melema and Matt Bierkins. I'm part of the SAP BTP Marketing and Solutions team. My focus is on BTP for S4HANA, and I also take care of BTP for digital supply chain and BTP for spend. I've been with SAP for about 20 years, previously in product development roles, but also working directly with customers on several hundred different implementations of platform and analytics. So as mentioned, I'm joined by Ruben and Matt. Hey all, uh, my name is uh, Ruben Melema. Uh, I'm part of the Global Solution Management Organization for SAP s and Cloud Public Edition. Uh, and with that, I'm focusing on the extensibility and integration topics, um, either within s and Cloud itself, or where we uh, introduce the SAP Business Technology Platform, our BTP, so our PaaS Platform as a Service offering, um, which tightly integrates into s and Cloud. Matt? Thanks, Terry, for uh, for having us on the podcast. So my name is Matt, indeed, in a similar role as, as Ruben, so s and Cloud Public Edition Solution Management. Uh, and similar to Ruben, really focusing on those customers that really struggle with, I'm going to S4, I have something that I need to deviate on, I need to some extensibility, what are the options and what can I do? So that's really where my role also focuses on. Perfect. So let's get straight into it. So the two topics we're going to talk about today are about clean core and extensibility. And we'll cover best practices and use cases We'll talk at a practitioner level here. So if you're an architect or someone who's trying to decide what you should be doing, then this is the right place for you. So to start with, let's just talk about a few terms that we've been hearing. So what does clean core mean? So maybe I'll I'll put something out there and then uh, Ruben and Matt, you can tell me your thoughts on it. So to me, clean core, it's a it's a methodology. It's a way of doing things so that extensions are kept very separate from the SAP application so that every time when you do an upgrade, when a patch is deployed to your S4 system, that the specific extensibility things that you've done that are needed for your business aren't touched. So you can upgrade with confidence, but still keep those special things that you need. Ruben, what what are your thoughts on, on Clean Core and how have you seen it in action? You know, in the past uh, with legacy uh, systems, whether it was SAP or any other vendor, a lot of times the customers had certain requirements that were not part of the solution uh, solution offering. And what they did at that time, they were just simply modifying the core code from that particular vendor or supplier uh, to actually adjust it according to their needs, right? And by adjusting, I mean modifying. So they basically changed the core delivered functions, core delivered uh, software. Uh, according to their needs. And of course it worked at that time, but it for sure also gave a lot of issues during upgrade cycles and potentially uh, customers were on legacy systems for years. Well, the feature that they actually built in was actually now part of the standard software. And now in the new, let's say, s and Cloud concepts, we work with these best practices. So what we call scope items and these best practices uh, we deliver out of the box. Uh, those come with uh, automated test scripts. Uh, we have a lot of process flows automatically covering that end-to-end scenario, uh, which then covers um, APs or, or most of the scope required from a customer perspective. Now, there is a piece of scope that might not be part of the standard offering, which either is differentiating them in the markets, uh, or you know we we thought about that functionality and we are currently building that or building that in the future, so it's part of the roadmap, right? Um, which then makes the full scope available to the customer in the end. But the, the core thing here to understand is that you're not modifying the core system anymore. So you cannot touch the core objects delivered by SAP. You can only extend it. Um, right. And Matt, what's, what's your thought on this? 
Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, and also in the beginning, I think there you were also spot on. Um, and I think what is important to understand is, and what we try to do as SAP, we try to give confidence to a customer, right? So what we try to do is we give tools and options to still make the process and the system behave that the that any customer wanted to behave. Um, with those fixed points that we take care of the full life cycle, right? So if you go into an upgrade, then we take care that it still works. It might not always be 100%, uh, but we try our very best to make it backwards compatible and to give the customer the maximum freedom of still deviating whilst still having the benefits of still doing extensions and keeping the core um, yeah, stable and steady and yeah, running as it should run even after an upgrade. Yeah, perfect. So just thinking about clean core and extensibility, one of the benefits for a customer that jumps immediately to mind is that it would reduce testing effort. Uh, if I would create an extension, because I know that it's going to be separate from the core that's getting upgraded by SAP, I can focus my testing efforts and save money on my total cost of ownership. I mean, Matt, do you want to just talk a bit about what some other benefits for clean core that you can think of? Yeah, but let me first indeed start by confirming what you're seeing, right? So what we're doing with this clean core principle is we're basically decoupling development. Uh, so, uh, and we can talk a little bit about the options that uh, that customers have a bit later. But in principle, what we see is we're going for a loosely coupled setup. So that means that we're completely separating the two developments and the way that they interact with each other is with so-called APIs. Now, what you're stating is, is that you reduce risk um, and that there's less um, testing that needs to be done. Uh, of course, the end-to-end -end uh, test still needs to be performed, right? But because we split up the, the separate development cycles, we really can focus on a single cycle that is the custom development to be 100% perfect, and we have full control over that. Um, now, the only thing that we then need to test after an upgrade is, of course, that API. So that's really where we still bring in that sta stability. And as to what we take care of is backwards compatibility of the APIs, but we also indicate, listen, even in the, uh, if an API is going to be changed or it's going to be uh, deprecated or something like that, then of course we indicate that as SAP, uh, but we also give the customer enough time to be aware of the situation and to handle and make sure that the correct uh, solution is, is going to be uh, brought in place. Right. And, and Ruben, just thinking to uh, a little bit more on that, like one of the key benefits of Clean Core and how we're doing extensibility now is that it can be very modular. Maybe can you just give an, a, an example of what this could look like, Ruben? Say maybe with data custom fields or something else that you that really would benefit from using Clean Core with S4 and um, BTP. Yeah, yeah, for sure, Terry. And I think in addition to to what what you guys were just mentioning right i think it's also time to time to innovation right so in typical systems it was kind of hard to keep up to date with the latest innovations um because of those modifications and changing the core code now if all the latest innovations get pushed to you automatically and because you have that extensibility pattern and the whole clean core uh, methodology applied then um, you can immediately leverage or use those innovations right the moment they become available in your system automatically right so the moment we upgrade the systems that innovation becomes live, right? So to just give you a practical example on that, like uh, AI, right? AI is a huge topic now in the world. Um, I think there are endless possibilities with it. SAP actually has AI capabilities embedded in the best practice solutions. And even, you know, when all of this chat GPT stuff and all the other things came out, um, you know, SAP also uh, provided things like the digital assistant that you might've heard about at Sapphire. Um, those solutions will become come out of the box with S4, right? Uh, so if we release a new version of S4, then all of those innovations will become part of that system. So the time to innovation, uh, it's making you highly competitive in uh, in the market. So I think that is actually one of the, the key things that I wanted to highlight on, um, on keeping the core clean and making sure that you get up to date. And for sure, those decoupling of, of extensions, right, and bringing that potentially on the business technology platform or even doing it within s Cloud itself. So making certain certain changes like adding a field or hiding a field or whatever, it makes you extremely modular and, and agile. Right? It's, um, it's going to decouple your extensions from the standard solution. You can run in your own pace. Uh, so if you 
decide to add a field today, you can bring it live today, right? You don't need to wait on us. You don't need to wait uh, till release cycles or whatever. You can just simply create the change, uh, the extensibility option and deploy it right away, right? And the cool thing is that it's all also working with low code, no code toolings, right? So there's not even coding uh, involved to, for example, add a particular field. So if you have a custom field that you want to create, you can do so with low code, no code capabilities. That actually means that a key user or a business expert can make those changes in your system automatically, right? And that all works smoothly together with the key, uh, the clean core message. So just thinking a bit more about clean core, can you talk a bit about how it's different between public edition, so S for HANA public edition, and S for HANA cloud private edition. Maybe just quickly introduce what the differences between those two editions are as well. Yeah, so S for HANA public cloud comes with a lot of best practices, right? So these are the out of the, cap out of the box capabilities that we discussed earlier. Uh, private cloud comes also with a lot of functionality, uh, but not all of those functionalities will have these best practices. And with keeping your core clean, it also means that the best practices in public cloud, um, you can make use of uh, certain extensibility options that we will discuss later, uh, but you can basically not enhance or adjust the core code from SAP. Now, in a private cloud solution, you technically could, but you should not. Okay. Matt, anything else that you can add yeah. to that? Yeah, I think that's spot on. Eh? So for net new customers, eh? so really starting on the journey with S4, then uh, it is what it is. It is what the options that we give to them, but especially for those customers that are in a transformation and already have a system, that is really an interesting part, right? Because they are sometimes struggling with, listen, I have a lot of custom code. What do I need to do with that custom code? And that is one we can see. We have a couple of options. Those can be like the older options, which might not still be entirely clean core. Um, but that option is still available in private cloud edition. In public cloud edition, that is a, a no-go. So that simply doesn't happen anymore. Um, still, we have options and, and things we can do to also handle those situations. Um, but I think it's important to state that although we go to a clean core uh, and we have a specific way of doing that, even with ABAP cloud coding, uh, there is still a way in private cloud edition um, yeah, to keep a little bit of that old coding if it would be required. Uh, but again, as Ruben said, it's not what we advise customers to do because of all the reasons mentioned. It is still an option though. So just before we get into our different extensibility options, which does relate to clean core, let's say someone, okay, they, they really want to go on the, the clean core journey. So maybe they're an existing customer who's created a bunch of ABAP extensions what should they do first? What would be their first step? Maybe Matt, you want to take a go at that? Uh, and then you're talking about an, uh, an existing ECC customer, I think, right? That's right, yeah. Okay, well, an existing ECC customer, what we can of course do, and this is often what we do in what we call the RISE transformation. Uh, so in there we have, uh, one of the components that we have is a custom code migration workbench. And that is actually a very useful tool that you can pick up uh, you can enable on your system. It's either going to run in the cloud or you can install it locally. Um, and what it will do is it will pick up all of the coding that you have introduced into your system and it will you will get a little bit of help on segmenting that code and then it will give you advice on what to do with that code. Uh, and there's a couple of options there. One of the options could be, listen, this code has not been used and not been touched for a long time, so better say goodbye of this code. Uh, an option can be, listen, this is not compliant in the newer system, um, uh, but we're going to help you, and we're, we can uh, mass apply changes to those uh, those uh, developments. Um, and then, of course, we have specific things where we need to say you need to cut this out of the system uh, because it doesn't really touch the rest of the of the platform, uh, and it's better to move it across into what we call the business technology platform because that is really when we start talking about the clean core. Um, and that tool, the custom code migration workbench is actually the perfect tool to guide a customer in that journey. Great. And and Ruben, can you talk a little bit about how BTP tools, I think you touched on it previously before a little bit, but um, like the low-code tools or process automation, how those help customers, maybe with an example, for, uh, for that clean core journey? I think we will also touch on that in the in extensibility in, yes. a, in a second. 
Um, but what we typically see happening is that if a change like Matt actually explained, you can better take out of that core and decouple that from the standard software, right? Then you actually take that to the typically to the business technology platform, right? So to the BTP, SB business technology platform, BTP. And on BTP, you have a lot of different services. And uh, one of those services to actually leverage low code or no code toolings. Uh, so what you see is what you get editors. Uh, things to actually create, for example, new applications, uh, really with drag, drag and drop, configuring that very easy, um, and then connecting that to Asana Cloud uh, to actually get data out of the system or push data back into Asana Cloud. But you also have the option to indeed leverage process automation to automate certain manual tasks, uh, typically uh, things like, um, for example, you're reading through an Excel file, uploading that into Asana Cloud, whatever, those kind of things that are automating certain processes can then also be leveraged on the business technology platform, but then tightly connecting that back into Asana Cloud, right? Um, you also have on BTP another alternative option to actually go pro code, so really writing lines of code. And if you're then leveraging the SAP UI5 uh, SDK, so the software development kit, to actually create these priori applications, you can then even deploy that back as a tile or as an application within Asana Cloud. So from an end user perspective, they do not even recognize whether you actually leverage the core uh, as a cloud system or whether it's actually an application uh, built by either you or, or a partner uh, on BTP, right? So you actually deploy it back into as a cloud and that is that is extremely well received. Yeah, so that, yeah. that would be my, my take on this. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. And just thinking about maybe a specific use case with build apps, for example, could imagine, you know, using build apps for a user experience workflow that connects maybe Ruben or Matt? Is there a specific example that you've seen um, around like user interface extensions? Yeah, so I was actually talking to a professional services um, uh, firm, uh, one of the big five, and they had a specific process about uh, project discounts, right? So they actually wanted to give the full project like a five or 10% discount. And in the core Asana Cloud system, what you would typically then do, you would go into the project, you would then actually go into the WBS elements, so that those are the work packages. And those work packages then contain these people who are staffed in it with certain rates and those rates you want to provide a discount on. Now within Asana Cloud, you have a, um, a section for that, uh, which allows you to actually set those prices per hour per, pe per person who is actually staffed on that particular project. Uh, but this particular firm, they actually wanted to apply a mass discount on the project, right? To automatically uh, decrease the values or increase the, uh, the values with a certain percentage. And you can then do two options. You can either build that within Asana Cloud itself, um, either uh, with, well, actually there is coding involved if you wanna go go that route. Um, but there's an easier option to actually build this on a business technology platform, leveraging these low code or no code capabilities, or if you like pro code capabilities. So what I basically did uh, for this uh, customer and they were investigating the fit of public cloud at the time, um, I actually built an application on BTP that were, uh, so I actually read the project data out of Asana Cloud using these allow listed APIs like Matt explained. So these are the APIs that we will not touch um, up, uh, during upgrade cycles, right? So they remain to work. And I made this extensibility scenario. So what I did, I read all the project details from uh, Asana Cloud, uh, including WS structures, et cetera. I was actually then also reading immediately the people who were staffed on that with their particular roles. And then with that also their rates, and what I did, did, I built an application on BTP that were actually displaying all of those values. And then on the top of that screen, there was a small little input field that actually said, what is the percentage of discount that you want to uh, apply? And if you would then say, okay, I want to have a 20% discount, then what it would actually pick, it would pick the rates of all those people. It would apply that 20% discount. And the moment the teams were actually hitting that submit button, it would then actually automatically create the condition records in Asana Cloud. Uh, for all those uh, project specific prices per hour for the people who are actually staffed on it, right? And that actually covered their scenario. So they had like a very good fit for public cloud edition at the time. Um, but that the only remainder part that was actually missing functionality was that actually that project discount thing. And I was then able to actually cover their request with the BTP stack while tightly connecting that back into Asana Cloud. And that is extremely powerful. And with that, I was just extending the core system and not modifying the core system. So that actually means that I fully decoupled that application, fully decoupled that process, uh, but I still deployed it back into Asana Cloud. So it was actually then still part of the end-to-end -end process within S4, but it was actually built and um, and developed on, on um, the business technology platform. So that would be one of my key takes on that. Great example. Uh, Matt, 
Did you have a, an example yeah, as well? To... Yeah, maybe to add to that, because uh, we also have what we call the SAP Discovery Center. So it's sap.com slash disco. But that is actually where we have a lot of missions. And a couple of these missions also describe what you're as actually asking. And um, it's quite interesting because in, in what we call SAP Built, um, we also have predefined content, right? And that content spans from the business technology platform into the backend system as for HANA Cloud Public Edition or Private Edition for that matter. Uh, and that's ready-made content. So uh, it's a very good question, but I think few customers know that we already have a lot of that content available. So there is really a specific store in, for instance, process automation, where you can just look into that store and download like uh, the applications and the, the processes that, that go along with it, and you can actually run it. So that's, that's as simple as it is. And really in the missions in the Discovery Center, there's a lot more of these missions and examples that that are available to customers, which I think is a, a huge, huge uh, value and a huge, uh, yeah, added, added value and benefit. Yeah, absolutely. So just for if people are looking for that, so if you look for SAP Discovery Center, you'll find some of those missions that Matt is talking about. Also on sap.com slash BTP dash four dash S for HANA, and I'll have the links uh, in the in the notes for this discussion. For, for both of those, so you can connect to those and find that pre-built content that we have. So let's talk a bit more about extensibility. We've talked a little bit about it as we were going through Clean Core discussions, but I really want to focus on each of the key areas of S4HANA extensibility and really talking about what are the best practices. So maybe let's start with, uh, yeah, Ruben, do you want to just talk about what are a couple of the the key areas. So we have, for example, um, business user extensibility. We have developer extensibility. Uh, Ruben, you want to take us through a few of it? Yeah. So the first thing to understand here is that we actually differentiate between what we do within Asana Cloud from an extensibility perspective and what we take outside, right? So that decouple, uh, decoupling of the extensions that we spoke about earlier with the business technology platform. So if we let's first focus on, on in-app extensibility, right? So everything that we do within Asana Cloud itself. If you talk about a business user extensibility uh, uh, flow, then we talk about what we call in-app extensibility. And in-app extensibility uh, covers uh, with key user extensibility the capability for a end user, so for a business user, to actually make very simple changes in what you see is what you get editors. And these editors allow uh, end users to, for example, um, add a custom field or add a, um, a field towards a screen to rename a particular field, uh, to save that as a particular app for Ryan for just themselves or for the, for a set of group or users, a uh, group of users within their company. Um, and that actually provides very easy to uh, to do tasks with a lot of low effort, right? So what you can actually do with that immediately, the moment you uh, create that, uh, you don't need to go to an IT department to get those changes in, right? And in the past, you needed to go to an IT department to actually make those changes. And now with key user extensibility, you can actually make those, those simple things yourself. Now, as part of the key user extensibility, we also have other things like uh, creating new, what we call core data services, so CDS views, uh, which are basically a view on top of the data that resides in your s and Cloud uh, system. And for sure, SAP delivers a lot of CDS views out of the box um, that are then used in either analytical reports or APIs, et cetera. But you can also create your own. And if you create your own, you can again also do that with what you see is what you get um, editors. So it's a super simple, uh, low code, no code capability uh, within Aspana Cloud itself. And then from an extensibility perspective, that then also means that if you create a custom CDS view yourself, um, or a custom field, et cetera, that all of those changes remain to work even after that upgrade cycle of S4. Now, if you want to take this one level further and you talk about more a type of a developer, right, a developer profile, and by the way, before I go there, I need to tell you guys that in-app extensibility is only the moment, is only available for people who you allow it to be available for, right? So it's not available for your full company. It will only be a, a group of users or a certain amount of users that you define, right? And then if we talk about developer extensibility, so that that next level, um, and you really create the ABAP code, um, we uh, in the past referred to this as the embedded steampunk. Uh, currently it's called the um, the ABAP stack within Asana Cloud, so the ABAP environment. 
um, you can make these changes with the ABAP code, right? And really writing lines of code, but only on released objects. So we release a lot of objects um, that you can actually then extend leveraging developer extensibility. But again, you do not modify the core of SAP with that. Great, yeah. Um, and just for looking at at the, I think what we call key user extensibility. So some examples that I've heard of are things like adding, hiding, renaming fields, um, creating custom fields on here. Matt, could you talk um, a little bit more about maybe the, the low code versus pro code and when you would choose to use low code versus, versus pro code and what they're best for? Yeah, a good question. So yeah, I think uh, if we look at it from a very high level, right? So, I mean, every line of code that we have to write um, yeah, it turns out to be a lot more expensive than if we talk about uh, local changes, right? Or what you see is what you get changes. Uh, and it's it's very simple. I mean, you don't have to educate people. Um, uh, you just see on the screen what will happen. You don't have to do debugging. So all of that is a is a huge difference from uh, between what we call in-app extensibility and developer extensibility, which, by the way, still both are inside of the s hana Cloud product, right? Um, so in terms of customers and giving advice on when to choose what form, I would always say um, if you have the option to do something with in-app extensibility, then go for in-app extensibility. Uh, and the reason for it is just as I mentioned, it's it's much simpler and it's much easier to set up. So that that's a really simple way to actually define what which one to choose. Yeah, and even even best like whether it's you're doing integrations or process automations, check to see what we have out of the box. I know we have a couple of customer reference examples, again, on the, the sap.com btp-4-4 s for hana page. We have examples where customers were able to reduce by something like 95% how many custom extensions they had been using because so much of it is done out of the box. And then that automatically makes it easier to maintain for the customer and the lower total cost of ownership. So no, I fully fully agree to that, Terry, indeed. But uh, what you're talking about is then indeed the business technology platform. Uh, so we'll really make a split into those worlds. Uh, so s Hana Cloud is one world. You can do, of course, changes in s Hana Cloud product. Um, if that were not to be sufficient, then, of course, we can look at what is possible in the business technology platform. And because it's a very different stack, of course, the, the options that you have in this business technology platform are much richer because it's really geared to work exactly what we're talking about, right? So everything that we want to do, like application development, uh, integration, uh, process automation, artificial intelligence. So that is really something that we dedicated, put in the business technology platform, and that is what it does, and that is what it's good at. And that is why the combination of the two, S4 in combination with the business technology platform, is such a golden, uh, golden combination, which, yeah, in the end, will take care of any change that you want to have in your end-to-end uh, -end business process. Yeah, and I think the the stats that I saw, well over half, actually a lot more than than half of our customers, are using BTP and S for Hana together. So they were designed to work well together. Uh, so Ruben, I think you were you were going to add something there. Yeah, yeah, indeed, Terry. Because the so from an integration perspective, right, and uh, like we explained before, S for Hana Cloud comes with a lot of out of the box integration capabilities, either between uh, SAP as one cloud and uh, and SAP uh, success factors or concur or any other SAP solution, uh, but also with third party solutions, right? So we have out of the box integration capabilities between as one cloud and, for example, Salesforce or Workday, or whatever, which you know they are we automatically um, uh, deploy or not deploy, but we actually provide you all the tips and tricks to actually deploy that, right? So we build that integration flow for you. It's displayed on api.sap.com. You can see the whole integration flow, all the value mappings, et cetera. It's fully thought of. There's an implementation configuration guide for it. The only thing you need to do is actually deploy that on the integration suite on the business technology platform, connect S4 to it, connect, for example, Salesforce or Workday to it, and it actually works, right? And we will also maintain that uh, from a best practice perspective, and then you only need to adopt that, right? So that is the only thing that, uh, that comes then um, uh, out of the box. The capability that you also have, and this is, I think, what we forgot to explain earlier with uh, with in-app extensibility, even with low-code or no-code tooling within Asana Cloud, you can even create your own APIs, right? Or extend the out-of-the-box APIs with, for example, custom fields that you have. 
And since you're using that extensibility pattern there, uh, there it also remains to work even after an upgrade, right? So we extend the APIs, the out of the box APIs, or you actually create your custom APIs. That's all fine. And one of the more advanced features in there, but still with low code, no code tooling within S4 itself, you also have the option to actually create, for example, custom business objects. So that's, you can see that as like a, a new table uh, or a new object within S4 Cloud, even with low code, no code capabilities. And then immediately you can open that uh, business object open as a, you can immediately create an API for that automatically with uh, or a lot of out of the box capabilities. So there's, a lot of uh, options for you there to even extend s Cloud with low-code, no-code uh, toolings, even without writing any line of code. Yeah, for sure. So I think uh, we're just going to, we're coming to the close here of our discussion. There's lots that could be, could be talked about. Extensibility is a huge topic, um, a lot of specific needs for customers. But again, I think the, the one, if I wanted to leave a, a person who's listening to this podcast with a couple of key thoughts, maybe Ruben and, and Matt, are there some key things that that you'd like to make sure they really understand for the area of extensibility and, and clean core with us for HANA? Yeah, I think, but but I would give away to customers really, uh, we, we can give you the confidence, right? So, um, I mean, what we try to do is, of course, we try to have an overlap as much as possible with the standard processes. But we, we've got it covered, you know, so any changes that you want to make to the process, we can guide you in that. And we can start very small with in-app extensibility, uh, but we can grow, also grow very big. So I think simple company, uh, smaller companies, let's call it like that, smaller companies with, with some small changes that we need to do, we've got it covered. Uh, but if we look at bigger companies, and we have like really separate processes or really advanced artificial intelligence that we need to put on top of it. I mean, we've got it covered. Um, but if we also go into the different direction of integration, we also got it covered. So uh, that's that's the key message that I, that, that I would like to bring across. Um, yeah, Ruben, how about from from you? Yeah, so I think that there's a there's a lot of out of the box capability that we that we provide, right? And it's always the 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 thing that if a customer comes in and you have a lot of capabilities that are have that that has that overlap like Matt just explained and you have certain cases that are not completely covering your needs I think the first thing that you need to ask yourself is can I adopt that standard feature right so potentially your process is currently slightly different than what we define as out of the box um, you can then either if you believe like you're that differentiating, then you, know, you can make use of the configuration option. So you can potentially configure the system according to your needs or kind of go into more extensibility approaches, uh, but then always start with in-depth extensibility, then go to developer extensibility and only as a last resort, side-by-side -side extensibility. Uh, but overall, that will actually also help you in keeping the core clean, right? Because the moment you're gonna apply that full pattern, you're gonna keep the core clean typically automatically, right? And it's um, it's a cool thing if you do this right. Sounds great. Well, I thanks very much, Ruben and Matt, for your great insights into this topic. Um, as mentioned, you'll be able to find more about this uh, extensibility and clean core topic on sap.com and the BTP for S for HANA page. Again, the link's in there, as well as in Discovery Center. Take a look at the pre-built content. We have eBooks and a lot of great community content from from SAP and from partners, blogs, that'll help you in your clean core journey. With that, I'll hand it back to you, Jennifer. Thank you, Terry, for hosting this edition of Let's Talk Cloud ERP. Check out the show notes to learn more about the offers Terry mentioned during his discussion around extensibility and clean core best practices. And one more thank you to the Let's Talk Data podcast for their partnership. We couldn't do what we do without them. Until next time, I'm Jennifer Frank-McGrory. Have a great rest of your day.